Welcome to the Dizziness Summit. We're here today with Dr. Michael, who's a lead clinician at the Neurologic Wellness Institute. Dr. Michael is a functional neurologist who specializes in neurological rehab, which includes patients with dizziness. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Michael. Of course. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk about vestibular neuritis, which is a very common reason people get dizzy. So I'm just going to leave it to you. Why don't you tell us what is vestibular neuritis and explain it to someone who might not understand why they're dizzy who might have vestibular neuritis. Cool. So to understand that, I think we need to kind of take a step back and understand what the vestibular system is in the first place. So the vestibular system, we have one on either side of our head, we have a left and a right, um, and there's actually canals etched into the bone of our skull. In these uh, canals, we have fluid that flows through them. So anytime that our head moves, the fluid moves, and um, it sends a signal to our brain saying our head is moving. So the signal gets carried on a nerve, right? So we have our vestibular nerve that is kind of the connection of the bridge between this vestibular system and our inner ear and our brain. Um, this vestibular nerve is what gets inflamed in vestibular neuritis and causes um, the issues that go along with vestibular neuritis that, of course, we'll be talking about today. Well, that's really interesting, Dr. Michael. So now we have a basic idea of what the inner ear structures are like. What does that mean to me as a human being every day? How does it impact my daily life? The, that vestibular system, as it's telling us how our head is moving, um, it also goes and tells us um, to move our eyes. So if I'm trying to look at, at an object and my head is turning right, whether it's because my neck is moving or I'm in a car and my whole body's moving, my eyes need to shift to the left. And we have this reflex that does that. So this reflex is really fast and allows us to maintain appropriate vision. Um, so that everything stays clear and we can see things properly. Cool. So it also, obviously, as we move our neck, we need to have information coming from our neck to our vestibular system. So now we have our eyes talking to our vestibular system and vice versa, as well as our neck and our vestibular system talking. And then lastly, the vestibular system is classically taught as our balance system. So, of course, as we're trying to stand or walk or do any kind of movement, we need this vestibular system to be telling us where we are and how our muscles should act to keep us upright in space. So this is really important, not just for our trunk muscles to keep us upright, but also for muscles in our ankles and legs so that we can stay, stay balanced on, on any surface. Well, that all seems really, really complicated. So if I'm a patient who has vestibular neuritis, how does the information that you just described relate to my dizziness? Cool. So what happens in vestibular neuritis is that nerve that we were talking about earlier gets inflamed and quits working right. Okay, so now we have, we have that right side and that left side that we talked about. And when one side isn't working, it creates an asymmetry. So this asymmetry sends mismatched information to the brain, and our brain doesn't know how to perceive it appropriately, and it causes this dizziness. So for example, if I'm sitting here looking at you, I have this right vestibular system, this left. As I turn my head to the right, my right vestibular system says, hey, I'm turning my head to the right. My eyes need to go left. Okay? In the vestibular neuritis patient, even when they're just sitting there, if they have the neuritis, this nerve isn't working as well. Now we have that same asymmetry that tells a healthy person that their head is turning right, but they're having it just sitting there on a normal, everyday kind of thing. So now with their head neutral, their eyes are moving off to the left, and then they start doing this thing called a nystagmus. So it'll be a slow movement out and a big jump back. And this causes a lot of, of dizziness known as rotational vertigo. So in the, in the acute phase, when the vestibular neuritis first happens, people get hit with these big bouts of, of vertigo where they can hardly stand up because the whole room is spinning. It makes them feel really unwell, gives them a lot of nausea. And, and this vertigo is really debilitating where they can, can usually not even get up. Sometimes they can, can walk with some help. Um, and they usually end up in the hospital because they just feel so unwell because of these, these big eye movements and that asymmetry in that uh, vestibular system. So that's really interesting, Dr. Michael. But why don't you tell me, if I'm a patient with vestibular neuritis, what kind of symptoms am I going to present with? It's a great question. So typically when people experience this massive vertigo, they assume the worst and they end up going to the hospital. 
Uh, here at the hospital, they'll get imaging to rule out strokes, tumors, things like that. Um, of course, if those get ruled out, then um, the doc will take a look at them, and they, they, if they have a vestibular neuritis or a problem with their inner ear vestibular system, um, they get sent home, released, and generally after about a week, um, they'll come into our office, and that's generally when I start to see the, the vestibular neuritis patients. Um, these patients at this time still have the nausea, um, but they're feeling a little bit better when they're not moving. When they're totally at rest, um, the symptoms aren't so bad. Their problems are when they start moving, right? So when they start acti activating that vestibular system again, that's when they start experiencing more symptoms, right? The world starts to move on them. They don't feel as steady when they're walking. Their balance system is off, um, things like that. So Dr. Michael, so what if I'm a patient with vestibular neuritis? Why would I go see you versus somebody else? So what's great is I've been trained a little bit differently where I don't just focus on the inner ear. So myself and our whole office is trained on the entire neurologic picture. So we do um, a full balance exam, a full eye exam, a full cognitive exam, and a full motor and sensory exam um, for the neurologic system. And this is really important because, as we've already talked about, the vestibular system doesn't just do one thing. It's incorporated throughout our body and, and does many things. So going along with this full neurologic exam, um, it allows us to look at everything so that we can customize the treatment for each vestibular neuritis patient because each vestibular neuritis patient is different just as every person is different. So the research shows that customized and specific treatment plans are much more effective for um, outcomes than just a generalized do this at home kind of protocol, which is kind of the standard for vestibular rehabilitation. Now, what's, what's really important is we do all of our treatments in the office, as well as giving some for at-home exercises. But while we're in the office, we can even tailor it more than, than if it was just to see you one time at the exam and give you a specific thing for you. Um, as we do the treatments in the office, we can tailor it each day on each visit to, to make it even more specific for each patient. So I'm so passionate about dizziness rehab because dizziness can be so debilitating, especially in the case of vestibular neuritis where people feel better when they're not moving, right, when they're still, that they end up becoming bedridden and totally lose their quality of life, right? It's not a life-threatening um, problem, but people really do lose the quality of their life. And our treatments have such a high frequency of success in helping people get back to their lives. It's a really rewarding thing to, to be able to see people be able to get out of bed, do the things that they love again. Um, and that's just why I'm so passionate about dizziness and dizziness rehab. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Michael. I hope to speak to you again soon. Appreciate it. Thank you for the time.